Hi everyone. Let's talk about procedures for acrylic painting in the art room. This is acrylic paint. You can wash it up while it's still wet with water. You can thin it with water, but once it's dry, it becomes a hard rubbery plastic. And that is why we have to treat it a little bit special uh, because it does stain clothes. It can ruin brushes. And we're gonna talk about some ways that we deal with using acrylic paints in the classroom. You're gonna see I have one piece of newspaper as a tablecloth. I also have one sheet of paper, small is fine, that I'm using as a mixing surface, like a palette. You're gonna see that I have a community paint tray and I have a piece of foil lightly laying on top of it. I don't put the foil on tightly because it has to be opened and removed about 100 times a week and the foil starts to shred if it's tightly put on. Therefore, when we put our foil, when we put our foil on our paint, we just barely put it on the top so it can be opened easily. You're going to see that we have all of the primary colors, red, blue, and yellow, and we also have white and black. I always get a little extra white because you use more white when you're doing acrylic painting. Some of the tools I use are paint brushes of various sizes and a palette knife. Palette knives come in plastic or metal, and as you can see, they're flexible. They're kind of delicate. They, they can be broken if handled heavy-handedly. You use them lightly, and they work great. If you're Working on a large project, you'll use a large paintbrush to paint large areas of paint. If you're working on smaller areas, you'll use a smaller paintbrush. When you go into the art room, you'll have a setup that looks similar to this. Small piece of paper, bigger piece of paper, and a paper towel. You'll use your paper towel to drain excess water off of your brushes and to also clean your palette knives. You're also going to need half a cup of water. Why half a cup? The reason is that the, paint, the cups we use are top heavy, wide here, narrow here. When they get full of water, they become very top heavy and easy to turn over by accident. As so, in order to combat that, we fill it halfway full. It's much more stable on the countertop. And in the event you do spill it, you've got a much smaller mess to clean up. All right, whenever we start to paint, we always dip our paintbrush in water first. In order to get a little bit of water down into the ferrule, the metal part of the paintbrush, and that way when paint gets down there, it keeps it from drying. It gives you a, it gives you a more extended cleaning time on your brush. It keeps paint from getting down into the core of your paintbrush and drying quickly. It gives you a little extra time to get it clean when cleanup comes. All right, when you go to get paint, this uh, ice cube tray paint system has been developed for students so that students can get just the right amount of paint that they need. You'll use your palette knife to get the colors you need or the paints you need, getting about an M&M uh, sized blob of paint in the colors that you need. Now notice, we always, always use our paper towel to clean our palette knife off because if we don't, we'll ruin all of these paint colors by contaminating them with other colors. So it is expected procedure that you will wipe your palette knife every time in between uses and colors. The reason we use a palette knife is because it's flexible. It's very good for mixing paint, and it is non-absorbent. What does that mean? Well, people frequently mix their paints with paint brushes, and what happens is there's a lot of waste. A lot of paint gets embedded in those bristles, and you may have wanted that little bit of paint. So always cleaning your palette knife in between uses is the expectation. White and yellow are the weakest pigments in the paint world. Anytime you make a color with white or yellow, you're gonna to need to use more of these because the other colors are much stronger and they will overwhelm 
white and yellow. Let me give you an example. I'm going to use my palette knife to make a little pile of paint, yellow paint. If I used the same amount of blue, it would take that yellow over to where you almost couldn't see any of the yellow. So instead, I'm going to take a very small dab of blue, small, and I'll come clean my palette knife in between use, always leaving it clean. Let's take a look. A lot of yellow, not much blue. All right, and now I can create a nice pile of green paint. And you'll notice that's the green that was mixed from a lot of yellow and a dab of blue. I've already pre-dipped my paintbrush in water. I'll dip into my paint color I've made. I'll give it a little twist so I get a nice point on my paintbrush. Whenever you paint, you always pull. All right, here you go. I'm pulling the brush toward myself. And what I'm doing is I'm enabling those hairs called bristles in the paintbrush to lay flat on the paper. If I would like to do paint strokes in different directions on the paper, it is completely acceptable for me to turn the paper so that those paint bristles can be pulled. If you go to push paint bristles, which is the wrong way to do it, what happens is the hairs and the bristles spread out and make a messy line. Let's experiment with pushing the brush. Oh, that's a terrible line. Yeah, this is a really good example of why not to push the brush, why to pull it. It's against our procedures for students to just take paint bottles and just put paint on their newspaper. The reason is students with alarming frequencies get about three to 400% more paint than they need. And then what happens is during cleanup time, there's no comfortable way to get this paint back into the bottle. So what happens is students end up throwing away an alarming amount of paint. Uh, if every student in my program, 160, threw away 400% more paint than they needed every day, it would be very surprising, and I'd be very dismayed at how much paint we'd be throwing away every day. The ice cube tray technique has been developed because it really does give you a measured amount of paint, and you can always get more paint when you need it. It is allowable and encouraged if you find that someone has polluted your paint, made your colors have the wrong colors in there due to not using their palette knife correctly. You can scoop out the dirty paint into the trash can and you can go get the paint bottle and refill your ice cube tray. When it comes time for cleanup, there will be one assigned person at each table who will be responsible for cleaning the brushes and the palette knives. However, it is our correct procedure. When it's cleanup time, each painter in the classroom washes their brushes 99% before you give it to your table brush cleaner for the day because they have a big job and it's the right thing to do to give them something that's already almost all the way clean. At the end of class, you'll go drain your dirty water into the sink and set it down so it is standing. Sometimes in, during cleanup, students get into a hurry and they walk over to the sink and in their hurry to get out of class, they quickly set their, their cup down and then they accidentally knock some over and then they just go ahead and leave class. This is not a correct procedure. This is not the cleanup that is required. You'll make sure to set your cups down right. All the clean paint brushes will be put away. And at the end of class, you should have a small bit of paint on your newspaper that you can feel free to throw away. If you have newspaper that never got water on it, never got paint on it, it could be folded up and put away and reused, no problem. I think with a little bit of practice, 
the room is going to stay nice and clean. You'll stay nice and clean. And we'll have a very productive art class. As we know, acrylic paints will stain your clothing. So please do help yourself to an apron at the beginning of class. I look forward to painting lots of great stuff with you. And let's go paint.